Buenos dias. Buenos dias, Mexico. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, Australia. Greetings, greetings to all. That is for sure. And Buenos dias, that's uh, Colombia. <laughs> So, buenos dias, Colombia, buenos dias, Mexico City, and good morning, America, good morning, Brazil, good morning in every country, and yes, I think here in Europe, we are in the afternoon, and Australia is at night so it's very nice to feel the presence of all of you here again in this friday and i am so happy that today it's not too hot like last week i am feeling much better Oh, good morning, Texas. So, um, today we are going to study very abstract things. So, Wisconsin, greetings, morning. So, dear hearts, thank you for your presence. And so, let's go be straight to the beginning of our selves. Welcome to the Seven Sacred Weeks Vlog 33. Oh, 33. In today's selves, we will perform the alignment with our beloved and mighty and presence and then we are going straight to the theoretical part in what we are going to study the planes of nature there it's wrong i wrote there wrong planes of nature and their correlation with human vehicles and the elements this knowledge is necessary to locate ourselves within the divine creation and is without a doubt so important for the perfect understanding of our vehicles and um, of our beloved mighty young presence and we are going to see why and um, to start as always let us just feel the mighty young presence within our hearts. In our heart center, we have our threefold flame. And uh, in this threefold flame, we have our great master within. So just feel the reality of your presence. Say hello to your presence within. Invite your presence to take command of hold the dream and produce perfection in your life. Ask this presence within you to govern your thoughts, your feelings, your words, and your deeds. And say to your presence that you give it freedom, complete freedom in action. 
and also give it thanks to be aware of this mighty presence within you. And then let us do together the opening blessing. Beloved and mighty and presence here, there, and everywhere, we love you, bless, and thank you forever, forever and beyond, for I am in you and you are in me. We are one on this journey through eternity. Oh, mighty I am, oh, mighty I am, oh, mighty I am. And now, dear hearts, let us move our attention to the Christmas star above our houses. Just visualize the expansion of its light and billions of light rays descending from that star upon the area where you live, charging everything, everyone in your house, in your neighborhood, in your city, in your country, with the ascend that you must love, wisdom, power, kindness, happiness, prosperity, and the perfection of the light. and visualizing that you live in a perfect world where peace and love reigns. Just visualize that in your area the great presence of life is in command of everything. And that presence knows just perfection. Then let us connect our Christmas star to the star above the Rocky Mountains. Just feed the flow the connection and feel the heart of the seven sacred ways. Feel the pulsation of the royal Teton retreat. and the expansion of its light blessing America, North America, and the world. The Saint that Masters are there and they are red ready to support us during this service to the light. May they protect us, our atmosphere, our internet connection, our force field that we build by the love of our hearts around this planet, and may they pour their light and blessings through this force field to mankind, to this planet, and I know it's done and it's sustained. Oh mighty I am, oh mighty I am, oh mighty I am. And now dear hearts, let us uh, to this call for the legacy of life. 
beloved I am presence and German brotherhood of the royal Teton retreat, lords of the elements and power and power of light, please charge, charge and charge this mineral water with you, whatever substances and virtues we need to restore the beauty, youth, health, vitality and perfection of the ascended masters in our physical bodies. When we drink this water at the end of our decrees, by the light of God that never fails, I command I demand and it's done. Right now, O oh mighty I am, O oh mighty I am, O oh mighty I am. So let's put the water to be charged uh, during ourselves. And um, now we are going to do the alignment. I go to do it in a very fast way because the subject of the planes of nature are, uh, are something very abstract and not so easy to explain. It requires a lot of information uh, so that we can just conceive it a little better. And so I still go to use my set of images that I have done last time with the Afro-American uh, features for the protocol. I would like to have a set with the Asian features and another set with the, the Europe, uh, European features, not American features, European American features. So I go to, I would like to have three sets for um, the outpouring of charisma in the end of the year so that every day, one day we can use the set with the Afro uh, features, another one with the Asian, another one with the, the normal European uh, features. Uh, I also ask my friend is Spirit, George, <laughs> to make another uh, chart of the Mighty Young Presence for me too, because this chart of the Mighty Young Presence was done for, uh, by him. And I asked him to create one with the, the Afro features. And that is so important because you see, we are going to study it today. The mighty and presence, in fact, in our electronic body, there is no form. There is no form. The mighty and presence doesn't have any form. We just personify that so that we can contemplate it easily. Our minds uh, uh, have great difficulty to concentrate in something without form. So, but even this form is not the real form because the electronic body doesn't have any form. So if you can put that, that feature there, we can put everyone. We can put one with Afro, we can put one with Asian because the, the electronic body is just light. There is no form there. But when we are contemplating our beloved mighty young presence, I think it's easier for us when we see something that reflects our reality in this physical world. And for this reason, we are going to have three of them. And I think for few students, maybe it's something hard to see it with the other features, but I would like to break this prejudice that the mighty and presence can be just in this way. Because the mighty and presence is here, there, and everywhere, it's everything, it's everyone, in every race, in every color, the mighty and presence is and so I would like that you understand it before I start. 
I didn't have time because just the subject of the planes. I think I took more than 18 hours work on it this week and I go to explain a little more when you get to it. And uh, I didn't have time to work a little more in my picture, pictures. I could come back to I have before. No, I always use it before. But I, I told myself, no, we are going to use it once more, our uh, Afro pictures. And, um, and then we are going to have also one other ones to uh, just uh, change every time that you, we do alignment, we use a set of pictures. So just that you may know that. And I would like now that you just relax. I hope you are already relaxed. <laughs> and uh, just uh, relax a little bit more your shoulders and uh, your neck area. And, um, and just give a smile. You see, with a smile, we have the... Um, uh, the opening of our heads for the light of the heart. So the smile relax uh, the muscles of our faces and more than that, it prepares our energy to receive uh, this uh, higher frequency of our I am presence within. So give a smile, feel relaxed, and now focus your attention on your mighty again presence, which lies straight above you in line with your head. Pour forth your deepest love and gratitude to your presence and say, my beloved I am presence, I say to you, my deepest love and gratitude, be within me and let me be in you forever. And let us now align our four lower bodies with our source of light, our beloved mighty and presence in our electronic body. Visualize it descending from your beloved I am presence, a ray of golden liquid light entering through the top of your head, flowing down into your heart, feeling and expand it to form a golden sphere of light. Feel the expansion of this light in your heart and the illumination of your breast area. And now imagine your heart pumping this light up through the same inner channel into your brain. Visualize this golden liquid flooding all the cells of your brain. And chill your brain structure expands expands and expands, forming another golden sphere of light. Feel the expansion of this light in your brain and the illumination of your head. And when your heart and brain are complete completely purified and filled with this light, united the two golden spheres in one activity of love, wisdom and power, so that the heart and brain become just one, a sun of dazzling light. Now feel the sun expanding expanding and expanding until it envelops your entire body. Visualizing your body made of pure light is substance 
in the center of the sun, blazing millions and millions and millions of light rays into all directions. Then repeat with me, I am ready. Now visualize it starting from your heart, a golden ray of pure divine love ascending through the same inner channel and reaching the heart of your beloved higher mental body, your Christ self. Flooding your higher mental body with your deepest love and gratitude, feeling and enveloping it until another radiant sun forms, similar to the lower sun and in fact the same. Now repeat, my beloved higher mental body, I bow before you in perfect obedience and adoration. Show me the way to the Father. Let me see the Father face to face. Visualize now another golden ray of pure divine love expanding from your heart ascending through the same inner channel, transcending your higher mental body and reaching the heart of your beloved I am presence in your electronic body. Feel your love flooding your I am presence until another radiant sun forms. Then repeat, my beloved I am presence, descend your light into my human heart and let me be your master presence on earth. I am ready, I am willing, In this moment of absolute surrender, the lower sun that you are in this human octave begins to rise and is absorbed into the heart of the intermediate sun, your higher mental body, which becomes even more radiant and also rises, rises, being absorbed into the heart of the upper sun, your electronic body. And in this perfect marriage of the three suns, a great explosion of light or course. And what was three becomes only one, your own ascended master presence. Feel this ascended master presence that you really are. Feel this complete unity with your source of light, light, and loving. This is your body made of light, your garments made of light. Feel the scepter of, of power in your hands and also the crown of victory in your head. Feel the glorious being that you are right here and now in that cosmic level. 
and then visualizing from the hands, the heart, and third eye of the ascended presence that you are, rays of love emanating towards the earth, bathing the planet, its atmosphere, and all life within with the pure divine love of your ascended heart. Just let your love flow freely to bless and bless and bless Mother Earth, beloved mankind, and our life manifestations, animals, plants, forces of nature within this planet. There is no power greater than love. So also flood the atmosphere of this planet with your love and feel the reason, power, and action of our combined love acting right here and now in this planet. And then when you feel the planet saturated with these blessings, slowly descend back into your physical body, but now in perfect alignment and unity with your source of light, your I am presence, and hold this feeling, hold this vision. And to finish it, I would like just that you feel that you are in the position of the Tila, in the charge of the beloved mighty young presence, that you are in this moment in control of substance vibration, energy. Feel your oneness with this mighty intelligence in your electronic body. Feel the violet flame blazing in through and around you. Feel the reality of your tube of light. Feel the power and powers of your causal body and feel that mighty I am presence in, through, and around you and everything that you might, might conceive in your world. And may your beloved mighty and presence hold you within this almighty protection of your tube of light your electronic circle so that you may live on this planet but never more be touched by human creation. And I command now, it's done and forever sustained. Almighty oh, I am, almighty oh, I am, almighty oh, I am. 
And now, dear hearts, let us, as always, just visualize that you are in that ascended master presence of the protocol, that we are around the planet. We are together around the planet. I don't know. Let's see. We are here at least. I see quickly. We are in 22 uh, viewers. I don't know. So I come back that we are 22. It's a master number. So that we are around the planet with our ascended master presence. And that in this moment, you just flow golden rays to beloved America and to all American people. And may the wisdom of the presence can enlighten the American people so they may choose it. Uh, wisely uh, the candidate for uh, in the next uh, elections in the end of this year. So just to visualize that America now is shining and also visualize as you can the heart and mind of all American people being enlightened in this moment. And I ask for the same blessings for all the countries on this planet that we can see with the eyes of our beloved mighty young presence and we can take it wisely decisions by the intelligence, divine intelligence within our hearts. And I know it's done and it's sustained. Oh mighty I am, oh mighty I am, oh mighty I am. And now let us do these two decrees together. Beloved you mighty and presence and great divine director, Seize the possession of America, the government, and her people, control her resources, and direct her activities by thy almighty perfection, envelop her in that invisible wall of light through which not can pass but the perfection of the ascended masters, and keep it eternally sustained. Almighty I am, almighty I am, almighty I am. And beloved mighty and presence, Saint German, great divine director, Cyclopia, and power and powers of light, take command, hold the dominion, produce perfection in the 2024 elections in America, bringing to victory only the candidate who can best serve the light and who can do the best for America and the world. I know it's done and it's sustained. Almighty oh, I am, Almighty oh, I am, Almighty oh, I am. And now, dear hearts, we are going to direct to our uh, theoretical uh, part because today we are going to study the planes of nature and their connection with our vehicles and uh, the elements. And it's really a very abstract subject. It's not a, a, a subject of easy understanding. So uh, to start it, uh, I just uh, uh, want that you understand the concept of plane in theosophy, because it's quite different from its everyday meaning rather than referring to a flat surface or a level of altitude, a plane in theosophy represents a state of consciousness or a level of vibration in the universe. These planes are interconnected and form a hierarchy. Oh, today I 
I get it better. <laughs> and so with the higher planes influencing and permeating the lower ones. So we have in nature seven planes and they represent uh, different levels of consciousness or vibration. And it's good to understand that they are not static or separate entities, but rather really interconnected and interdependent aspects of a unified reality. The author who teaches that human beings are capable of evolving through these planes. So starting here in the physical until the Reishi ascension in the atom uh, or atomic plane. Uh, and, and from there achieve a union with uh, the divine. So just you know, in the last uh, week, I um, have prepared this diagram and it took me, I think, two hours to prepare that in that week because you see, we are dealing with the uh, concepts that are very abstract. They are not so easy. And uh, in the last diagram, it was not complete because I don't know if you remember, I put here a lot of, uh, I think, um, question mark, the interrogation question mark, I think it's question mark here, and here was not complete. And so it was very nice that I didn't have time because this week I talked to the master and I could complete that diagram. It didn't change so much. Yes, of course it was only here, but I think it was two or three items here uh, that I changed uh, with the instruction of the master. And when I finished it, so in doing, completing it, the master came to me and told me, you see, I would like that you make another diagram because you see, if you show people uh, uh, the claims and the principles in this, a diagram of people just will think that one plane is above the other and that they have in their mind that the universe is like a pie you know <laughs> and you have the feelings of that pie in several levels and I think you cannot help people in this understanding that it is so difficult even for advanced students and you need to do and I say okay master so I was thinking that I was ready the master came with another idea and so from this diagram that I put here the correlation with the elements and we are going to see it in the reading and we are going to study more in in depth this connection in future classes no because yes we have just once a week and we need to have patience to go step by step and so because of the master told me that it just took time to start doing it again and I created this diagram and in this diagram, we can see what we have started talking, that the planes are not separated, static things or separated things, but they are interconnected. In fact, the physical is not uh, below the absolute, that is the first plane, but it is within. So, the physical is within the astral, within the mountain, the bodhic, the atman, the anupadaka, and the adi plane. 
So the astro is within the mental, the buddhic, the atma, the anupadaka. So is one plane, is within the other. And so that was nice because in this way we can perceive that they are not separate, they are not like uh, uh, stages or realms one above another, but they are one within another. And then I also uh, put the correlation with our vehicles of manifestation and you see we have the human manifestation below the third plane because here I go to come back to this diagram in the end but just to restart our talk the first two plane that is the absolute or divine sometimes it's called divine Adi and we are going to see in the description of each plane and the Anupadaka plane that is the second that is also sometimes called called as monadic plane they in fact we put these two planes separated you know for our understanding but in fact they form the unmanifested universe. So these two planes here, they express the unmanifested universe. And here, below the atomic plane to the physical, we have manifestation. Before or uh, before this atomic, we do not have manifestation. And these two planes, the Absolute and the Anupadaka, they are just one thinking. And I was yesterday reflecting, Master, I don't know how to explain it for the people. And the Master told me, tell them about the turtle. And the master just told me that, and I say, the master is telling me. He just tell them about the third, but he didn't tell me anything more. And so today, I was in the kitchen cooking the lunch, you know, making the lunch, and then it came the information of the master completely in my mind. It's because you see, the absolute is like our house. It would be like the shell of the turtle. And the Anupadaka is like the body of a turtle. And you see, if you look for information, you cannot separate the shell of the body of a turtle because the shell of the turtle is like uh, it's part of itself. It's part of its skeleton. No, and so if you try to separate the shell from the turtle, it will die. It cannot survive without the shell. And we can imagine these two planes for a better understand like this turtle, because the shell is the absolute and the body is this Anupadaka. Uh, um, plane and what it happens when the universe is not manifested we say it in the uh, Easter teachings like pralaya when the universe is in pralaya it means it between manifestation it's like our sleeping at night when the universe is resting within this absolute is like the holy creation that starts here with the mother the anupadaka plan just withdraw into that shell so there is nothing there there is anything there but yes the body is within the shell it's just in the sleeping in that moment. And when the universe starts its manifestation, 
from the shell emanates the body and the first emanation of the body is still in a um, not really a form but it's just the first emanation of that energy that was resting that was is leaping within that shell it is this uh this is starting of a new universe and it is this anupadaka plane so it started from there the emanation that go to differentiate in the several levels until we reach here the physical and so but we can see in this first two planes they are not subject to time and space and they are not warning they never start and they never end they are always there and so we are going to just go quickly through all the planes and then in the end yeah, you come back to the diagram and I have created another two or three diagrams so that we can locate our um, mighty and presence or our expression and understand it in the end. To not repeat information, we are going to read and in the end I go to explain a little more with the, uh, my knowledge that acquired by the beloved Saint-Germain teachings. And so just to start it like that, you know the first and the second they are just one, they are just there always and um, they cannot leave. They are like the, a coin with two faces. They are just one unity in fact and they are not really, they not go through the time in space. They are always there. And, and Below the atom, can we start the manifest um, um, the manifested universe? And so we are going to start it from the higher until we reach the physical. And just to start it, uh, we are going to talk about the divine plan that is also called Adi. It's also called absolute and is the abode of the first law. In many teachings, especially in theosophical teachings, we are going to see that there is the dwelling place of the first law or is the first law itself. This is the primordial plane, the undifferentiated state of existence before creation. It's the source of all the other planes. It's beyond manifestation, beyond everything that we may concept. It's absolute, without attributes, the source of all. Adi, this term comes from Sanskrit and means primordial or first. It implies the original, uncreated source of all existence. And I put because sometimes it's called divine. Personally, I don't like to call this plane as divine. In fact, we could not call this plane of anything because it's so far our uh, uh, conception we cannot conceive it is uh, this plane in any way in this human body and even the ascended mass in higher levels cannot conceive it sometimes because it's really uh, it's 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 something before what we call the universe and uh, so, but I was looking why they call it sometimes divine, and they say this term directly refers to the divine or godlike nature of this plane, suggesting a realm of infinite power, wisdom, and love. You see, it's not true because in that level there is no attributes. Power is an attribute, wisdom is an attribute. When I say divine, 
divine is an attribute. In that plane, we don't have consciousness. We don't have manifestation. We don't have anything that we can conceive in. Not only in the absolute, also here in the Anupada, because I told you both work together, they stick together, and it's so beyond our conception that we can, uh, yes, it's, it's something very abstract that uh, I may say it's a place of no place. It's a place of, of no place. And in fact, we could not talk about it. We cannot just conceive it with the, our human minds. Everything that we tell here, we are using language, we are using object, subject, we are using attributes, and there we don't have it. We don't have it. But in opposite, we come from there. And I think it's enough to know. Sometimes someone can ask a question like that. It's really important to know this knowledge of the planes. And I would say to you, for the average human beings, it's not important important at all to know about the planes because they are not really uh, in the moment of ascension. If When I say average, I not say inferior. It's a human being that is, is still not in the moment of ascension. It's really, it doesn't matter to know about the planes. For example, my husband is not awake. And so for him, this knowledge is really not important in this moment. But for all of us that we'd like to raise above human limitations and that we are willing, wanting our ascension, the knowledge of the plane is so important to amplify our uh, vision of what could be divine creation. And so the absolute, sometimes I put it in white and see, I put white here because even here we have an ellipse, ellipse, I think, <laughs> I may say that, uh, and it's a limitation and there, there is no limitation. In fact, it would be, would be everything and it would be nothing. We cannot conceive that sphere. Even that, we come from there. And so then we have the second, the second plane. The second plane, as I told you, with the first is the unmanifested universe, and they stick together like the shell and the turtle. And so but what happens when you perceive the Anupadaka plane is because there is the first emanation to build a new cosmos, a new universe, a new systems of worlds. And so Sometimes they call this plane also the mother or Akasha because it is together with the second logos that sometimes you read in Theosophic teachings and also in Easter teachings. And uh, it's something that the shell of the third would be the home, the father, and the body of the, uh, the turtle in manifestation when it is stretched from the shell, it's the mother that goes to hold the creation within it. So we can could say it's the mother and the father there. It's associated with the 
element of ether or akasha, but it is ether and akasha is not the same ether of our etheric bodies. We don't have another word to say about it, so we say ether or akasha, and in fact is connected with the etheric body, but the etheric body is just a a different differentiation of that energy in our human levels and for that we have a lots of distortions when people uh, say they read the um, uh, akasha records the most of them they read just the records that is within the etheric level in our physical level that may we may find great distortion because they are not written like an ascended master or maybe I, even ascended master you do have difficulty to do it this um akasha and source of everything the body of everything that is the second logos in that is sphere of uh, uh, the unmanifested universe. But uh, we know that uh, there we have uh, the first feeling of something. And when you have that feeling, it brings forth what you have the two first opposites like light and darkness for example for example but in that level of this second plane these two opposites like light and darkness are in perfect balance in perfect harmony so what we are saying here as darkness it's not the darkness that we say here uh, connecting to an evil thing. It's just two forces. And we can perceive that two force in this second plane. And, um, and from that, we have uh, the first feeling of a divinity that is the cosmic light, that is the electronic substance that you give birth to everything within that universe. But that substance there is not the same substance that we know here. The substance is there, it's formless, it's coreless, testless. We cannot smell it. It's just completely undifferentiated. But there we have the source of all divine sparks. In a moment, in a subi plane of that plane, the, 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 this first emanation begin to suffer differentiations with the differentiations, it just uh, becomes a little more densified and in some moment of this densification, we have uh, the ocean of monads and we are going to talk more about it in the same class and also in the future because it's a very abstract concept and i just put it uh, put here also what means this anupadaka this term also comes from sanskrit and literally means without beginning without beginning without ending it implies a state of eternal existence untouched by cycles of creation and destruction. So, everything so abstract, I hope you can take a little bit from it. And then you come to that third plane, below or within, no, because it's not just below, it's also within, that second plane and remember every plane of nature has also seven sub 
planes, and each subplane also is subdivided in seven and so on. So in the atomic plane, that is the third, we still doesn't have no vehicle, real vehicle of manifestation, but there we have a notion of light, and the teachings of the Ascended Master we call it electronic body. But you see, just is a notion of light. There is no form there. It's still one form, but it's it's begin to be more a mother that she is able uh, to give shape to some to something. So it's a notion of light we can imagine it. It's the highest plane of consciousness because before it, we don't have a conscious. Really, consciousness begins a little bit in a Nupadaka plane, but you have conscious uh, consciousness. You need to have uh, different things. We need to have uh, opposites. We need to perceive the differentiate because before differentiate, we cannot be aware of different things. And so we don't have consciousness as we know here. And we are going to study it a little more uh, deeply in the future. But in this atomic plane is when we are one. When I say in the protocol, we are one with the heart of creation. Maybe I am telling that we are one. Completely consciousness, we are a a fragment of that ocean, but aware of being in that ocean and that we are one with the ocean. And so uh, it's the plan of the pure spirit that we call. It's the source of all existence and the ultimate goal of spiritual evolution for all of us, for the ascended masters and cosmic beings. It's the plane of the third loss. And the third loss is uh, also called the great Brahma, the universal mind, primordial universal mind. And also, we may say the universal I am presence, third loss. And when the third love appears somehow in that subplanes of that plane, it appears with him the primal, uh, the primordial seven. The primordial seven is the seven angels in the throne that we are going to explain in the future because otherwise we could stop it here and just talk about it one hour. And is a seven rays. And then from that, from that seven rays, we have uh, uh, our principles because our seven bodies is not there in the Anupadaka in absolute. Our seven bodies that we conceive here is in this uh, in this area below the 30. Uh, starting there with our electronic body that is always rooted in that ocean of light in this atomic plane. And each one of these seven is one of our vehicles. And we are going to talk more about it and why it's seven. We are going to talk about it also in the future. But that is the uh, third plane and also is associated with the fire element but from a higher perspective because the fire that we have in that plane is not the same that we have conscious uh, consciousness in this uh, physical world but you know for today, let us be simple. 
And then below the atonic, we have the fourth, if you start counting from the first above, above, or the largest one, know where we are within, in fact, uh, then we have uh, the Buddhic plane. The Buddhic plane for us in the Ascended Master teachings here, A-N-T, that I put that is Ascended Master teachings in general, we say it as causal body. But it's still there. We design the causal body as the rings of colors and it's something I think really wise because there is no real vehicle like you conceive here but uh, is the first garments of light and through that garments of light that is the causal body we can perceive the fragment of that great ocean of light from the second, uh, the third plane that we are. So we start our individualization with our causal body because before it, we are just the ocean. It's also, uh, it's called in the Theosophic teaching sometimes as Buddhic, they may say also Manasic sometimes, and I go, but to not confuse, I go to use just this term, because you know, just in the secret doctrine, Blavatskin, Tolkien, uh, in several ways about the seven planes of nature, it's sometimes using different names, and in the future I go to explain how, why, because otherwise we go so far. But body, body comes from body, that means perfect wisdom. It's from the same uh, root that gives birth to Buddha, Buddha, the enlightened one. It means enlightenment and knowledge and it's also associated with the element of fire and that sometimes you say that is the Christ together with the higher mental body but is the Christ and I go to explain more it in the future why so um, it's the realm of our spiritual aspiration, intuition, our connection to the universal mind that is in the atomic and in the mother, in the second logos, and uh, it's the realm uh, that we feel completely on oneness. Uh, we are we still are feeling our individuality, but in perfect oneness with the, everything that exists. In the atomic level, in the electronic level, we never feel the individuality as a separate thing. We start to feel it in this buddhic level. It's still somehow the beginning of the feeling of individuality but it's still in the ocean and it's a very abstract concept that you may discuss about of course I don't know if say to reflect about talk me uh, more reflect about it in the future uh, in this hell there is this feeling of perfect unity with all that exists and when we achieve this, uh, this plane consciously, we have the ability to see beyond the limitations uh, of this physical world. We say that there we have the perception of the true reality. Everything that we think that is real here is not real. We can just perceive the reality when we are anchored in that level of the buddhiki or the causal body.
when we just achieve it, when you just to start consciously with our human side, outside that plane, we have created enlightenment. We uh, start beginning to understand the meaning, the real meaning of life. And then below it, and before I say below it, I put this slide here because sometimes we call the monad, the atma, that is in the atmic plane. Uh, but sometimes we have in Theosophic teachings uh, the connection, uh, what is called mona, would be the relationship of these two planes, that is the atomic and the buddhic together. And for this reason I put it here somehow here. And here I wrote the buddhic and the atomic plans build up what you call monad. Sometimes is there in the theosophic teachings that and sometimes it is in the another way, but we shall go on this today. Because monad is buddhic reflecting atomic, like a mirror reflects our images. And the monad plus the higher mental body that is a principle below it, form what you call our individuality. And just to remind you that the higher mental body is also called the soul, not the soul that we most here in this, uh, in most of the spiritual teaching that is just uh, uh, the four lower bodies, but the soul, the seed of the personality, in fact. Sometimes it's called higher intellect, higher manners, and sometimes ego, but with um, uh, great cup, I don't know how to say it, small cup, great cup, big cup, <laughs> no, not the ego of our personalities, but an intellect that is beyond it. Uh, and these three, the monad, the atmic, buddhic, and the higher mental body that is, we are going to talk in the next plane, form what we call individuality. So the monad is the divine spark. We can say that is the atomic, but we would never perceive it in the atomic level because there we are just the ocean. But there we, this monad is the core of our beings, is the eternal part of ourselves. We may say that the monad is the light itself, atma, electronic body, and the buddhic plane is the lens that help us see it clear. I may say for you, for example, that, uh, for example, the example of the microscope, a microscope particle, if you have some fluid, you take some fluid, you take it in your hand, you cannot see the particles within that. But if you take in a microscope and with the lens of a microscope and you look to that fluid, you may see the, the life, uh, the life uh, components of that substance. We can see the bacteria, uh, bacteria. You can see the virus. You can see the microorganisms uh, within that. And without the lens, with our normal eyes, you cannot perceive it. And so, if you we didn't have the buddhic, we could not perceive it. these. Uh, uh, this um, atman or atomic plane, our core, the white core that we are, the fragment of that ocean of light that we are. And it's through this buddhic level that we can perceive it because it's just amplify it in a way that I can perceive it. And 
It's just because we have this lens that we can study, we can reflect, we can expand our power of abstract abstraction, 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 I think abstraction to perceive it these um, source of light that you are in that level of the electronic body. It's just a note that I put and then below it we have the mental plane. In the mental plane we have two vehicles. We have the lower mental that we call mind body or mental body in the ascended master teachings and we have the higher mental body and here we have a difference because in theosophic teachings they call this higher mental body ego and this higher plane this higher manas as causal body but we are going to use the ascended master teachings um, nomenclature, I don't know if they say it's names, because it's, it's important, it's, uh, it simplifies things for us, and we are going to see why also in another class. But this plane is associated with our thoughts, our intellect, is associated with the air element, which is a symbol of lightness, freedom, and thought. And it's composed of this part, the lower mental and the higher mental. And talking about the lower mental, that is something easily for us to understand, is the mental body or the mind body, is the plan of our concepts and mental construction acquired through our experience throughout incarnations, often associated with our rational, uh, rational side, but we serve sometimes somehow self to purpose and I, I'm telling here self because I didn't find another word but it's not a self of evil sometimes but just I am doing something think about in, in myself that I go to have some results for myself and it's really connected with the level below it or with that is within it that is the emotional level or the astral level and for this reason there in this lower mental we have our desires our attachments and also is very limited concepts there because you see it's our beliefs and sometimes I build some mistaken beliefs or I say distorted beliefs and until I purify I have everything it is these kind of things desirable and undesirable in this lower uh, level of the mental plane there we have also what we buy from the outer world cultural friends that we buy from friends from our culture, family, peoples of influence that we hear. So there is everything. And then we have the higher mental level that we call the higher mental body. In theosophical teachings they call it causal body. And there we have the, uh, the project or seed of our personality. There, yeah, within, because you see, here is the ocean of light in the atomic level, and here we have this the formation of the causal body that just the limit, a fragment of that, a drop of the ocean, and we start feeling our individuality, but it is in this level, in this level of our higher mental body that we really have the first feeling of I-ness. I am an individualized being. Is is in this higher mental level, and we are going to talk you see I am still there I have lots of things to talk and so uh, we are going to just open this information in other classes in the future don't think about today is 
just the basics. And so there we have the repository of our karmic impressions because it's still the higher mental body. You remember I told you before, it's, it's part of our individuality and it is the higher mental body that incarnates. And when you finish an incarnation, all our experience come back to the higher mental level and there we rest and then we incarnate again. But all those information is always there in this higher mental body because for the higher mental body, dear hearts, how can I say, like for us, I, I am called Morgan or Lisa, if you prefer. Lisa is my real name, Morgan, I use. <laughs> I use it and I continue to use it and so, but I love the both names. So I am Lisa today and I go to sleep. And tomorrow I remember everything that I have experienced in a day before. And I continue to be Lisa. I continue to be Morgan. And so the higher mental body, for the higher mental body, each embodiment is just a day. We could say for the higher mental body, the embodiment is just a day of experience. Like for us here, when you go to sleep and tomorrow we wake up, but we wake up with the knowledge that we have in the day before, which didn't change the personality. And so for the higher mental body, it knows everything from the beginning of formation of our life streams, our individuality, and always, it's always aware because for each, the incarnations, the embodiment is just a day, so to say. No? And um, um, is the dwelling place of the soul, this, ha this ego with the uh, big cap, uh, is what incarnates to be, why it incarnates to conscious mastery uh, these densest planes of nature. So it incarnates until it gets complete master of this lower mental, emotional, and physical level. And so to get mastery of this density, it's important. So it's our pure sense of being there in this higher mental level. Um, there we have our creativity, gifts, talents, the ability to think, our spiritual understanding, wisdom, intuition, and in fact is the consciousness, is that conscious, that things here. We could not be, be alive or you could not think what things is that consciousness. Of course, that conscious has to deal with our brain and until our brain is enlightened, purified, our lower levels are purified, that consciousness cannot do too much. Sometimes it's just a weight that the life stream begin to give its freedom to govern. And we are going to talk more about it in the future. But that always is a part of our individuality. And it is the air element because the mind is the air element. But the level of air in the uh, higher mental level I, I put here something that in the diagram I put here, we are going to discuss it in the future. It's a fire air, so to say, because it descends from the fire and until it's densified in air, it takes a little bit because it's really not a complete air and it's really a fire air so to say, and we are going to see it in the future. And then we have 
within the mental plane, the emotional plane, that is called also astral plane in the Theosophic teachings. And here we have just one vehicle that is our emotional body, sometimes is also called our feeling words. Is the realm of our emotions, desires, is the plane of dreams, fantasies, and illusions. It's associated with the water element, and um, that is a symbol of fluidity, fluidity, adaptability, and emotion. And there we have the root of our desires, our fears, and all of our attachments. And I think I just have a done three classes about the emotional plan and so I don't need to go further in this knowledge and we are going to discuss it more and more in the future because we just start these instructions but below the emotional level we have the physical plan where we are with our physical and etheric body. And as in the mental, in the physical plane, we have two vehicles of manifestation, the etheric that we just talked about and the physical, but one is thick with each other. So the physical counterpart that we talk just in class about it, that is this physical body, that is the densest, uh, made of the three densest sublime planes of this physical plane, where we have the solids, liquids, and gases. It corresponds, so to say, with the earth element, but here we have the perception of the four elements that I need always to remind because you see some someone asked me this week said the guru says that we have five elements and I think I just didn't answer because you see in the two last classes in which I talked about the elements always when I put the lords of the four elements I always says or uh, said I am putting here four, but in fact, they are seven. They are not five, they are seven. But for this level of evolution, this cosmic moment in evolution, we perceive more four elements. And I go to explain why in the future. In this moment, we are starting to begin to perceive the either that is the fifth, but we are going to take still hundreds of years and maybe thousands of hundreds of years until we have the same knowledge of the fifth element that is the ether, like we have about the earth, the air, the fire, and the water today. So it you take long but here in this moment in this level in this body we perceive the manifestation the fine manifestation or differentiation of these four elements earth air fire and water so we may say earth but we say the earthly expression also of these four and of course the elements builds uh, are blocks that builds the physical world and um, and through them that we can perceive the objects and everything that exists and, and I don't go to explain too much about it. And then together we say that here we have the material level but it's not the material because we have a dynamic field with this uh, Concrete manifestations of the elements that is, in fact, our etheric counterpart that forms our second vehicle of expression in this physical plane that is the etheric body, that is the vital force, life energy that animates everything that we see. 
uh, it's also called double etheric in Theosophic teachings, is composed of the four subtlest subplanes of the physical plane. That's just to simplify in this moment, we will call it the ether one, two, three, and four. And it always attached to, to the physical level. It stick to the physical and cannot live separate as the mother and the father in the first and second plane here also. Our etheric and physical we stick together and one cannot exist without another. And is associated also with the either the second counterpart, no, is associated with the either with Akasha, we're going to explain more about it, you know, because when we talk about the Akashic records, most of the people can just read the memories that is within this ether. But we are going to discuss about it in the future. And um, the ether <laughs> is considered the primordial substance from which all other elements are derived. And it's so, but it is here in this area of the second plane. And what you perceive as either in the physical plane is something very different. Of course, it's connected. It's a correspondence to that either or akasha in the second plane, but it's not the same. Discuss just in the future. <clears throat> and then, to finish it, you see, for this reason I didn't put the crease because otherwise I knew that could be too longer and I didn't have time to study it and um, I, did it. I didn't know how much it, it would take but I felt that could be longer this the study of the planes of nature. But the beloved Saint Germain told me that it was important before the study of the mental body, because the mental body, you know, with these two vehicles here, higher mental body and mental body, is the vehicle that we develop the power of abstraction. And I think to develop this power of abstraction, understanding. If you have the knowledge of the plans, I think it helps a little bit. And I think it's for this reason that the master asked, gently asked me if I could just put this information for you guys. And I hope you have enjoyed it. But coming back to finish it, so here we have the seven planes that we just described a little bit. And so just remember, Adi and Anupadaka are the unmanifested universe, like the shell and the turtle. When the universe begins its manifestation, the body comes forth, emanates from that shell, and then from that we have uh, the starting of a new universe. That is the same for the start of a new solar system or a new planet even. This uh, explanation we can use for several levels of creation. And then from the atomic to the physical we have manifestation, the universe the starting of the universe. Of course, in this first level here is still something very abstract. And so the connection uh, that you may perceive it to finish for today is that ourselves, we our electronic body is not rooted in the absolute because there we don't have form. We don't even have consciousness and we cannot talk about it. And if someone want to talk about it, it cannot explain. He just put flowers and flowers in words and we cannot conceive it because there, there we don't want to have light, we don't have darkness, it's the absolute 
For this reason, I like more absolute than divine. If you can call something, because we even could not call it of anything. We can say love. Love is an attribute. So that is not love. So, but just remain of the turtle. And then we have here the, uh, when we start the, the ocean of light that generates the, the cosmos or a galaxy or uh, systems of words, solar system. So in that level, in third level, we start in that electronic uh, substance that is an ocean of light there is the root of our electronic body, and then we have the other ones descending. And I put it here for you because, you see, I put it here, our individuality, like I told you, is made of the electronic, the cold, and the higher mind. So we could just put it here like a triangle, and the four lower bodies uh, form this uh, square, uh, uh, quaternary, and so, and you think as the mighty and presence as something above, and the love centered man would like that. I tell you, if you see the planes, you are going to see that is that is nothing above. In fact, we are within. So sometimes you say. The mighty and presence is within us, in our hearts. It's good to know that. It's good to perceive it. It's a portal to our abstraction and our re reunion uh, with it, that great presence in the universe. But in fact, the presence is not within and it's not above. We are within that levels because you see, our individuality is made of these higher planes and the personality is within that. So if you need to draw it for our understanding, better understanding, we would put this cut quaternary within the triangle because the individuality is really not above us is we are within it that is we are within it all the time because the level the planes of manifestation are larger and interpenetrate and permeate what we have here in the physics. So we just are like a fish, always in this ocean. And for this reason, I put and made also this diagram. And from this diagram, I just locate in the chart of the mighty and presence within the divine creation. So I put here the chart so that you can visualize that we are here. And yes, there is something about. But for us, the important thing, and we are going to see hi, is until we reach our ascension, that we are just a unity with all that exists, that is anchored, rooted in this atomic plan, in the electronic level. But, so to say, I would like that you realize it, the personality is not below the individuality, is within, and that is something, I don't know, you say, that is a very abstract subject. To explain it in our own language, it's very difficult. To explain it in another language that we don't use every day. And I don't consider that I have complete dominion of English. And it's still a, a bigger challenge for, for me. But I hope I could explain it very well and that is, I put here, 
another uh, slide so that you can conceive that in this way <laughs> we put the the chart in this way but in fact all this is within it's like in a fish uh, swimming within the ocean of light we are within the electronic substance of the electronic body and i don't want to go further than this i think i hope you were not with a headache it's a very abstract subject but i put this last slide the chart and i create a geometric chart of the mighty empress as you see and it's really a good chart because we think we put here we personify the electronic body you know and i understand that still i do pictures no so i do pictures because the pictures help our human mind to conceive this this higher uh patterns of the higher levels and so the image uh, makes easier for us to contact those levels and but in fact the electronic body has no appearance the electronic body has no shape the electronic body is light and we can just conceive it as a fragment when we have around the causal body. We are going to talk more about it in the future. But another way to show the shot of the mighty empress, and I think it would be more truly <laughs> to the real meaning of it, would be with these geometric forms that we have here in our individuality that is just not below, but we are as a personality within it. And when the personality is purified by the violet fire, that seed, that seed, that is the higher mental body, we are going to talk about it, that is anchored in our hearts, become God in action in this human octave and with the expansion of that seed that is the higher mental body here when it starts will govern this outer activity we build that tube of life so we are within that presence and we are in fact God in action in this level and it's our for today. We are going just to seal this knowledge with the great invocation, do the lecture and go direct to the end. So together, from the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men, let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men, may Christ return to earth. From the center, where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the Master know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may seal the door where human creation dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. And now let us take the lecture, uh, the water, and finish the call for the lesson. Beloved Ayan Presence, Saint Germain, Brotherhood of the Royal Teton Retreat, Lords of the Elements and Power and Powers of Light, please charge, charge, and charge this mineral water with the blessings from the Ascended Master the Octave of Light and put here all the substances you need to restore the beauty, youth, health, vitality, and perfection of the Ascended Masters in our physical bodies. Transmute this water 
into the elixir of life, transmuted this water into the elixir of life, transmuted this water into the elixir of life. We are so thankful. By the light of God that he never fails, I command the demand and it's done right now. Almighty oh, I am, almighty oh, I am, almighty oh, I am. And so feeling the transformation of this water into the lexer, let, let us drink it together right now. Cheers. And just place the attention in your mighty young presence, give thanks to it, to all ascended master, and to all creation, send your love to everything here, there, and everywhere. And give thanks to the brotherhood of the Royal Teton Retreat, asking the Ascended Master to give you the perfect understanding of the seven planes of nature and how you can use it to achieve your ascension, to transcend the human limitations on this planet. Send your love to them, especially to our beloved Saint Man. The Master loves you so much and you can not imagine or conceive how much. Send them your love and send your love to your beloved I Am Presence that core of light in your electronic body that in fact is one with the ocean of life and light that builds up the universe. Give thanks to awake you to this knowledge and invite it to govern your senses on this physical world and feeling this majestical presence that we are, we are rooted, anchored in that cosmic level. Let us finish this service with the closing blessing. Beloved, mighty and presence here, there, and everywhere, we love you, bless, and thank you forever, forever, and beyond. For I am in you, and you are in me. You see, I am in you, and you are in me. Can you perceive more that it is true what we say here? We are one on this journey through eternity. Almighty oh, I am, almighty oh, I am, almighty oh, I am. And thank you to your hearts. Uh, next week, we'll see, I am a little road, uh, ready in this moment. Uh, next week, we have our blog third form. Um, I think next week, we have uh, 7 13 and then we have 20 September 20 September I needed to change our service from Friday if you prefer in this date I can change it for 19 that is Thursday or for 21 that is Saturday because my husband has an event in that day and I need to go but and so not in the next week we are going to have in Friday, but in the uh, week after we need to change the day. So think about what is better for you, or normally I put it in Saturday, and, uh, and it's also good. I go to remember you in the week. And so next week we have the third four, 
and we are going to continue the explanation of the mental plane as we have done of the emotional and um, I hope to see you in the next week again. I hope this knowledge you could grasp something, it's will. You see, this knowledge and conception of our place in creation, it's so abstract. Even advanced student has difficulty to understand it. You see, I was in Switzerland years ago. I didn't have Facebook that time, and it was the year that I have done my fundamentals in the I am table. No, just it was just one year. But I, I had that time a very beautiful I am uh, student friend, you know, and uh, someone that I could talk that was very near to me and I still love him to today. And, um, and she was in my house you know, one day, to, uh, she visited me. And uh, we were talking about my experience, you know, and um, one of the first things that she asked me, could you please explain to me the mighty and pleasant is above or is within our hearts? And so you see that I am student was born in the I am teachings from baby. The parents was in the I am activity. She was over 60, <laughs> so so over 60 years of uh, learning the I am teachings, and she was still in doubt if the I am presence is above or is within. Because we have instruction that they localize the I am presence above, and that sometimes they say the mighty am presence within our hearts. And so sometimes it's so abstract that you cannot really perceive is within and or is above. In fact, is within, is above, is beside, is behind, is below, is everywhere. But within the heart, there is a purpose. So uh, I think last week someone asked me in the comments also, please, can you explain to me? The mighty young presence is God or is the personality or is yourself? What is the mighty young presence? So many people really sometimes advanced students cannot conceive it. This uh, subject of the plan is just the basic because even people that are studying theosophic teachings for a long, long time decades, that means 30, 40, or even 50 years, sometimes they have difficulty to grasp the abstraction. And even, why? Because in the theosophic teachings, sometimes there is so much theory, and beloved Blavatsky in that time needed to translate the book of Siam to the language of you have here in English, and that book was in an ancient in language that was even not Sanskrit, is a language before it, so ancient is that book. And she sometimes needs to reflect and meditate how translating that work because she needs to, the book of Sian is the core of the secret doctrine, and she needs to decide. Uh, the term, the word in English that could fit it with, and sometimes it was not possible. And for this reason, sometimes, and even the secret doctrine, sometimes you read something and then you read the same thing with another name, or sometimes it is used the same name for two completely different things. So it's really difficult. You need to really uh, meditate you need to bring forth that intelligence that is in the buddhic level in your causal level to this uh, outer mind to hold and govern your brain you have to, to have you have to have i think i can say it a good brain 
so that you can just conceive that information and perceive it in this uh, physical level to understand the things. So it's a very difficult subject. For this reason, I just put the aligning in it and I still have about two hours and I comprised it, it, comprised it, comprised it as much as I could in this moment because I didn't have time to test it. And so I hope you could understand that you have something from it and we are going to continue the information in the next class. I wish you a lovely weekend with your friends, with your family and especially with the awareness of your divine presence within, above, side, everywhere. The presence, the presence that is. So I love you. Thank you so much. And ciao, ciao.